I want to show you how I used a continuous line drawing to create this abstract still life. I included a little bit of the background um, furniture and the door and a little bit of the foreground. So thanks for joining me and here goes. The idea of a continuous line drawing is that you begin and you don't take your pencil off until you have finished the drawing. That's pretty much it for a continuous line drawing. Amazing how your eye just begins to completely focus on the photographs. That's the vase in there. And I haven't done much to the vase. The mat continues this way. And on the mat are all these beautiful leaf drawings. So this was a chair goes in and around there and comes down. So that's the chair. I haven't taken my pencil off yet and that goes up there. And behind the chair uh, is the frame of the door. And before I take my pencil off, I do want to finish the table. So I'm going to double down over these lines to about here and circle. It's giving me all these beautiful negative opportunities to paint. I was a little heavy handed with my pencil, so I think I'll remove a little bit of the graphite. I'm just gonna roll that over and that will just remove gently. I've got a Holbein masking fluid pen. I did a review on this if you're interested in it. I can't resist doing some of these lines. I think that would be lovely for enhancing the fact that this is a mat and separate to all the rest. Oh, that's great. Okay, clean the tip. The masking fluid has dried and I've got a spray bottle and I've just added some quinacridone gold to my palette. I'm going to spritz all over. You can see that this um, masking fluid here is re-wetting. Um, that's because I haven't waited long enough. So I'm going to put some lovely quin gold down here and maybe some on the vase. Just putting it generally here and I'll add some there. And maybe a touch in there and there. And while it's also lovely and wet, I'm going to come back in with this cobalt. Maybe add some round here. There's this beautiful round mat. I'll just mark that off. And maybe paint in between the chair. That's the door the door. Mm, might have some of that come just gently over and over to here. In here are the uh, leaves. So I think I might um, add some lovely greens there. A little bit more cobalt and that's a mix I had on the palette from the last video. Here's this beautiful green. So that's a mixture of cobalt blue and quinacridone gold. So I'm just going to gently add some greens here. It's all green in there. I'm trying to use my brush on a range of angles so I get some marks that might look a little bit like leaves. All right getting rid of stuff so that I can do some tipping and it'll run through the flowers. I was really avoiding touching them with my brush because the masking fluid wasn't completely dry. So I'm just spending a minute getting things to tip about. This is a cheaper round brush. It's an Aqualon. So I'm going to grab some paint and touch the masking fluid and then I'll wash my brush off straight away. Some little, a little more cobalt and this time I'm going to give this vase a bit of a cool side and maybe in there 
and perhaps some of the leaves can have some cool underpainting too. Cobalt to put in the foreground. The beauty of masking fluid is that you can paint so easily and the lines are kept beautifully in place. All right, time for some beautiful red. This is Permanent Rose. I use it interchangeably with Quinacridone Rose. I'm going to add some pink here because I love the idea of some beautiful warm colors in the foreground. And then I'm going to take this pink up this way, this way. Here's the warm side of the vase and that's the cool side. Just put a little bit there. So the pink, I hope, will take you up there. Oh, I should put some even down here, into there. I'm hoping that the pink will take you up and then into those warm flowers. Oh, big lump there. Not ideal. I'm going to get rid of it lumpy in there. So a little bit of warmth, maybe in the center of my flowers. I'm just thinking about things like how to make the color come up into my composition. And I'm going to get rid of that water straight away because I can see little tiny bits of masking fluid um, that are floating there and I don't want them to reattach to my brush. All right, that's it for now. I'll come back with the next layer. So part of the beauty of the continuous line drawing are the abstract shapes. So on this layer, I'm going to capture, I hope, <laughs> the negative shapes of the leaves. Just a really light glaze. And when you're glazing, your goal is to gently glide the paintbrush over the surface so that you keep the bottom layer intact. Working nicely. So I need to bring that blue up, continue it up. So I might do that in the background. I'm going to go back to a light tone. I think I'll put in a little bit of this turquoise. Go back to a light tone, more water I think. And if I establish it first in a light tone, it's quite lovely to work out whether or not it's working in the way that I would like. And then if it is, you can go further, re-establish it again in a darker tone. I love the moment when you take off the masking fluid. It reminds me very much of printmaking. My first love was printmaking. And um, the most exciting part of printmaking was always the moment when you revealed the print. You'd put it through the press and pull it off on the other side of the press. And uh, that was always the most exciting moment to see whether or not you um, had created a great work of art. You can't tell right up until the moment that you bring it up. I think I might bring that green down into here just a touch. I will put it in here just a little. Just soften off. Just felt like it needed that. Okay, it's all lovely and dry now. I'm pretty happy with the way this is working down here and I'm happy with the, how it's leading my eye up. Okay, I've removed the masking fluid from the foreground. And I'm quite enjoying what it's doing. So that's rather lovely. I still need to add more leaves, but the whole thing is looking incredibly green. So while I do need to add more leaves, which are naturally green, I need to be thinking about what color I want to increase the amount of. I don't want more yellow. I think that's a lovely balance. I'm loving this blue, so I don't really need more blue. This is cobalt teal blue. So I was loving that earlier and I'm going to just give myself some of that. So to this lovely turquoise, I'm going to add a hint of this green over here. I'm not being careful about the image. I was at first and now I'm just enjoying adding 
leaf shapes. I think when you get to this stage of the painting, you're really thinking about the composition rather than the original photograph. Right, having said that, I'm going to make that decision right now. I'm going to move the photograph out of my view. I'll leave the edge of the plate visible, but just glaze them. I think I'm going to encourage this shape to match up to the other side. I think it would just hopefully make a little more sense if both sides are wonky rather than one. So I'm going to balance that there with a lovely dark and just wipe it in. Okay, a little bit of water on my brush to soften off that colour. A little bit of water to soften this colour. Soften, soften, just, just add in a few darker marks on my background elements. So this was a suggestion of a chair. Put a little bit of shape into my vase. Oh, good. That's providing a bit of shape. And right, so adding the purple in the background is doing two things. It's counteracting the amount of green that's there, plus it's bringing some of these foreground colours into the background. I'm really going to paint the negative spaces. I feel a bit like I'm living in a dust bowl at the moment. We're having our kitchen cupboards replaced and so I'm constantly trying to cover up my artworks but it's just it's just difficult because it's really fine dust when you're renovating. And the next video I'm going to make is about the top 10 watercolour channels on YouTube. I need to put some of that purple down here. Right, so this, how this is finished will be determined by how this is finished. And in order to finish that, I need to dry it. My gardenias are lovely and white. And I left little areas for the um, in between the masking fluid for the colour to come through. I really like that uh, look. So by looking at the image, I can see there's um, little bits of yellow tone on the flowers. But I don't really want more yellow in the picture. I'd rather a little more warmth. So I'm going to re-wet this lovely little pinkish purplish section up here with lots of water, lots and lots of water, because I want to just consider adding in some really gentle toned sections, just to give them a little more form than they have at the moment. Purple and with just a damp brush, I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna soften off those edges. I'm going to place my signature in this corner and I think I should use some white or red. Oh no, that purple. Marion Chapman. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. See you next time. Beautiful. <laughs> That's wonderful, darling. <laughs>